Praise the Lord and welcome to today's reflection. I thank God that we have been together, we have walked together, and I believe that you are being empowered by the Holy Spirit to do God's work. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. You left him with us that we may be in our presence every time so that we can be able to witness, we can be able to overcome evil, and we can be able to live for you. We pray that your presence will continue to be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We read from John chapter 16, and I will read verse 8 to 11. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment concerning sin because they do not believe in me, concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer, concerning judgment because the ruler of the world is already judged. So this week we remind ourselves that we are looking at the divine work of the Holy Spirit. And we have seen that the Holy Spirit empowers us to witness. He empowers us to live for Christ, to live in holiness, and to resist the evil one. His work is to convict the world of guilt. And that is what we are focusing on today. I can imagine if the Holy Spirit is not with us. And Jesus said that it is good that I am going because the Holy Spirit will come. And now he explains to us what the power of the, what the work of the Holy Spirit is. You cannot be able to witness, I cannot be able to witness on my own. I cannot live a holy life for Christ on my own. You cannot live a holy life on your own. You cannot be able to resist and to fight back evil and the devil unless you have the Holy Spirit. You need to plug that power into that power. Plug it, let it remain there. Don't leave the Holy Spirit aside. And so today we look at the work of the Holy Spirit in convicting the world. Definitely there is no one who wants to stand at the court and be told by the judge, guilty as charged. No one wants to be convicted. Everyone has to defend themselves or call, call lawyers and advocates to defend the person. And one of the most important tasks of the Holy Spirit is to convict us and to declare us convicted, to be, to be, to be, to be, know that we are guilty of our sins. Although we know in our hearts that we are sinners, we often have a hard time admitting that we are sinners. Even when we do wrong, it is very hard for us to say, yes, I have done wrong. Most of the time we look for excuses for cover up and we cover up. And you remember David, when he sinned, when he was confronted by the prophet, he said, that man must die. But when he was told about his sin, that this man is you, this sinner is you, he called upon the Lord. He, he, he went down and realized, yes, I am guilty. I'm not even worthy to do, to be a man of God. And so the Holy Spirit works in us so that we agree with our sin, sinful situations. And when we agree in the sinful situations, he doesn't leave us to feel convicted, to feel guilty, to live in desperation and de despair. He gives us the ability to accept and to allow God and to work in us 
to receive salvation, to receive the grace of God, which has been uh, given to all men, that he calls every one of us to receive Christ. The Bible reminds us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is no one who does good. And this is, no, this is what the Holy Spirit reveals to the world and calls us to repentance. He does not convict the world so that they can feel desperate and live in guilt, but brings each one of us to repentance so that we can live at peace with God. Jesus told Nicodemus, unless you are born again, you cannot inherit or enter the kingdom of God. Most of the time we tend to ignore the Holy Spirit in our lives and we continue in our sin even when he prompts us. We have excuses and reasons as to why it is impossible to live a godly life in this world today. But those who believe what the Holy Spirit says about sin and the consequences of sin turn to Christ in true repentance. The Holy Spirit's work is in convicting. He convicts us graciously. He helps us to recognize that we are sinners and that we require a savior. Repentance has everything to do with a closer, more intimate, fulfilling relationship with God. I've been thinking about the call and the commissioning of Isaiah, that when he saw the glory of God, he said, I am a sinful man. Woe to me because I'm a sinful man. Let us always see our sinfulness through the holiness of God. Let's not compare ourselves with our neighbors, with our, the people that we look up to. Let us see our sinfulness in connection and in relation, uh, relation to the holiness of God. Repentance is the way out of escape from guilt. It means that we have a change of mind, heart, and life towards sins. Today, the Holy Spirit reminds us that we should confess our sins to God because he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Secondly, he is also reminding us to confess to one another, according to James chapter 5 and 16, we confess our sins to one another so that we may be healed. I call upon each one of us today to examine our lives. Can you list down some of the things that you need to confess to God today? Write them down. Also, consider things that you need to confess to each other. Because when we confess to God, then we are washed and cleansed. When we confess to each other, then as we pray, we will be healed. We pray that as we continue to focus on the empowering of the Holy Spirit, tomorrow you will be available at 10 p.m. for a Kesha here at the cathedral. And we welcome you and pray that God will help us to see our sins and to see our sins towards one another and confess them. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we consider our lives, as we examine ourselves, there are many, many things that we need to confess to you. Hear us as we confess to you our sins so that we may receive you as our Lord and Savior. We also need to confess to each other so that we can receive healing. And so, Lord, we pray that you Convict us of the sins that we need to confess to each other. And we pray for a blessed day as we focus on your word. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.